Hi, my name's Tracy and I'm a mortician. And I'm Trish and I'm not. And welcome back to another episode of... Are you dying to know? Because Trish is dying to know. I am. Sometimes. I am. Yay. Hi everybody, how are you? Hello. Thanks for joining us. Hi. We're going to knock over a heap of questions today. We got a ton, haven't we Carl? We, we got do. a ton. We got lots of questions to answer and I've made a note of quite a few of them and cool. Tracy hasn't seen these ones yet. <laughs> so let's hope she's on her A game. I'm going to read them and she's going to answer them as succinctly as possible. Thank you, madam. Yeah. Just so, stop me when I go eh, um, eh, um. I'll just edit you out. Okay. <laughs> so um, if you've asked us a question in the last, oh, I don't know, six months or so, it might be here today. Yes. And if not, we might be still getting to it. Yes. <laughs> First question is from Patty. So Patty's mum and sister were killed in a car accident oh. in the 70s, a long time ago. Wow. That's no, you know, still yeah, horrible. It's still awful, yeah. Um, Patty said that they left home and five minutes later they heard the sirens and then they sort of got yeah. notified that it had happened. Yeah. They were recommended not to view the bodies. Mm -hmm. Patty asked, how did they look? Yeah, it's a difficult one, isn't it? So it was a car accident. It was a car accident. Oh uh, Well, to tell you the truth, it's a difficult one to answer because of one, I don't know, the, the kind of impact the car had. You know, was the you know was it cut in half? Was it, it's it's a really difficult one, and they say you couldn't view, so it must have been a quite traumatic um, accident. As in, there obviously was injuries sufficient enough to say that there is you know n not a really good possibility to have a view, and that's not going to be traumatic. So there must have been some facial injuries and maybe um, you know really dislocated injuries to the body itself you know the whole body parts of the body so it's a really difficult one but uh, yeah I would have listened to the advice of the uh, funeral directors and you know it's that difficult decision to school whether you do view and you don't when they tell you not to and I mean back in the 70s you they wouldn't have let you view it anyway because that was just the way it was things are different now though things aren't they? are different mm. so when when I say that there's nothing I can do I can't fix the problems you know um, we give the options of you can't you know and the family will say I still want to view but we'll wrap the body cover the body and let the family come in and sign a piece of paper to say we've advised you so you can still touch the body and feel the body um, to have that view and so it is a difficult one to answer I'm really sorry you can't go into more detail there's just too many variables yeah, really what yeah. sort of vehicle was it how yeah. did they die what accident was it a truck that hit them was it another car was yeah. it was it a lamp horse yeah, yeah it's yeah it's there's too much there yeah. to um to even like you can have and you've said it before you can have a similar car accident and wildly different injuries. Oh, you can yeah. have two people go in front of a train and one's got nothing wrong with their nothing. face and the other one there's nothing, nothing left, left. Of. Yeah, yeah. It's it's wildly different from one situation to the next. It's all got to do with the impact and the direction of impact yeah. and all of that stuff. There's so. all kinds of stuff. So really sorry that you uh, you know you lost your family like that. It's absolutely tragic. It is. And wish we could help you a little bit more, but know that the funeral home probably did their best they probably could at that time as well as uh, yeah. 70s uh, reconstruction wasn't a big thing around in the 70s as well so you know there wasn't a lot of options to do that too so it's probably another reason why sorry about that thanks though. for sending yeah. your question yeah. in thank you um okay the next one is from someone called other name 1000 hello <laughs> yeah are you surface embalming the vaginal canal and lower intestine um when I'm embalming, um, the internal canal of uh, the vagina is embalmed uh, with the arterial fluid. If I am doing a surface embalm, which is different altogether, where we, I'm just doing a body wrap, which is just the surface of the body, then no. You know, because all I'm doing is preserving the outside for a few days uh, of the body just to firm it up and dry it out. But if I'm doing a full embalm, even a TP, which is a temporary preserve, which is basically less fluid in a milder fluid, um, then it, that happens during the arterial embalm and when it goes through the arterial system. Uh, I can hypodermic work um, when we do an embalm in the genital areas where we go, and we've talked about this before, uh, where we 
when we do uh, the, the cover diaspora, where we have to do when we embalm, as that's making the incision uh, just in the tummy here, putting the trochoi in, I will put the hypodermic needle internally down into the organs, into the vaginal area uh, internal, the same as I do with the, the main male genitals. And if if extra embalming needs in them areas. No so, different to the trachea or the ear yeah, canal or yeah. any other orifice that we have. All the same. And I do just want to uh, say something about that because I will get a, a, a I know when we did a, a, a one about the genitalia of uh, a boy a while ago on embalming. And I did get a lot of uh, feedback from morticians around the world and embalmers. And it was negative feedback I got saying that they'd been in the industry 40 plus years, never had to do any. That's ridiculous. It's a load of rubbish. Well, it's not. It, it's actually, if you've got your embalming book in your Bible, which is written in America, because we use the same one as the Americans use, it actually has a paragraph all about embalming the penis and, um, you know, the scrotum and that it's all in there. So, yeah, it does need doing because it's still part of the body that will decompose if you don't embalm it properly or correctly. But normally with a vascular embalming, it will embalm that way. Thank you for answering that. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Next one. All right, this one is, well, similar questions okay. from the Spin Doctor and spin from doctor. Vanilla Buzz. Hello. Uh, and the question was, how often do you find a portacath and do you remove them? So a portacath is when someone's being treated for cancer usually. That's right, they need yeah. to access the um, bloodstream regularly. Mm -hmm. And so they put a little device in here and it can yeah. be injected into without actually having to go into a vein in your arm. That's right. Right, yes. Um, so how often do you see them? Daily. All the time? Daily. And do you take them out? Only if the family requests um, them to be taken out off of burials because it's plastic and sometimes the environmental friendly thing is, because it's the same as a pacemaker, it just sits under there and uh, the plastic tube that's attached is inside the, um, the vessel. So I can just make a little incision, it's tiny, pop it out and close it and often I do if the family asks, but sometimes I don't want to open the body up. There's no and I guess sometimes to. the family want it out because it's a reminder of all the medical intervention that's yeah. happened in that person's last years. That's true, that is very true. Yeah. So, yeah, so daily I do, unfortunately, so, yeah. Which means there's a lot of people dying with medical interventions. Absolutely, yeah, too many. Okay, can a person, oh, this is from user. I use it. With numbers as well. Lots so, of numbers. Yes. <laughs> can a person be naked, no clothes, no nothing? Absolutely they can. And we, well, we, well, I've had that request many, many times, male and females. So, uh, it's particularly males seem to want to do the the family will say they want to go out the way they came in the world totally naked so yes we do do that the thing uh is if there's a viewing or anything because viewings can still happen um uh or there's an open casket i've never had an open cough or a casket for somebody naked but sometimes private family members want to have a view and what we do there is when we take the lid off for a view and for a coffin we just put it slightly over and plus we have side sheets so they're not dressed but the side sheets in the coffin or casket are pinned for dignity basically so you can take it off you'll see the chest there but, uh, but basically this bitch but if you all. wanted to be totally starkers and viewed totally starkers, you could be. Yeah, absolutely. And if a family want to do that, absolutely. Go for it, so, guys. Yeah, go for it. It makes my job easy. I'm not dressing a deceased. That's right. Dressing a deceased is not easy. I've seen it done. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So, no, go for it. Yes, you can be naked if you want. Well, here in Queensland, Australia, you can. Okay. So, this one's from at Jennifer. Um, and Jennifer's asked, what would a person look like if you viewed them many weeks after death? I think it was 10 weeks. Mm -hmm. um, uh, because this has happened to Jennifer and uh, she was advised not to view because the funeral home uh, had said, or the or it might have been the coroner, had said that the deceased had no hair or skin, um, disfigured in some parts, some mm -hmm. parts of the body were swollen and black and green. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, Jennifer wanted to know what the person would have looked like uh, mm. had Jennifer viewed her person. Yeah. I would have recommend no viewing too. Ten weeks is a long time without any um, 
procedure and that person sounds to me that that there was no embalming or anything happened for the extent of the decomposition that's mentioned. been well for the decomposition has been described that is a body that's been a long time deceased without any intervention um, chemically at all or like cared for by a mortician or embalmer so you no know, I wouldn't have viewed the body I would have recommend no viewing so the body will basically look wet and that's because we call disquamation, which is skin slip. There'd be no skin on the body whatsoever. So I'm talking, you know, when you get your sunburn and you get your blisters and you've got that fluid that builds up and you peel that off and you've got that rawness underneath and the fluid, that's what the whole body would have looked like. But um, instead of it being that really dark red, it would be really purple to black because we've gone into that advanced stage of decomposition. And yeah, the uh, tissues can be swollen and it's swollen uh, because the fluid is breaking out everywhere through the body. Because, because the cell walls are breaking yeah, down and all the fluid leaks the out. The skin's disappeared, the top layer of your skin, so fluid's leaking out. Um, discoloration is happening. So we go, when we start to break down and decompose, our bodies go through stages of different colours. So you get the reddy, purpley colour first and then it goes into the greenish you know, deep purple, reddish, and then it goes black and we get blacker and blacker. And eventually the body will, um, the skin will come off, you'll get the bloating, you'll get all the wetness. And if the body's not tread and left outside, it'll eventually dry out and then start going really dark, leathery and- Like mummifying yeah, almost. Yeah, that's right. And once the wet stages of the decompositions happened and all the liquid and all the fluid and all the bloods disappeared it, we just get darker and darker and darker and darker and it's just um just a normal it, it's like i've i've akin to a bowl of fruit when you've seen it before it goes furry you get the mold on it starts to shrivel up it gets wet in it and then eventually it just shrivels into a little dry bit of powder so yeah so the person would not have looked at, and the smell, the smell would have been bad too. So to mask that smell as well, you would need a lot of chemical and you probably wouldn't mask it very well. Even with embalming, you know, uh, uh, embalming would be quite difficult arterial because it's been too long. So it would have to be topical embalm, basically wrapping the body and pouring embalming chemical on because the arterials are broke down. There's nothing for the fluid to flow through. So. so unfortunately, I guess it's fair to say that the description that Jennifer was given was correct. Would, would have been correct. And if that was the description, the body would have been at that stage of advanced decomposition, which would be really traumatic. One, to see that and two, to smell that. It would stay with you forever, darling. Honestly, it would. Yeah, so mm, we're sorry. That's awful, really awful. Yeah, but at least the funeral director was honest, and, uh, and, and you know told yeah. you because, or whoever told you told you because yeah. often they don't. They just say no, nah, not viewing. That's it. Yeah, yeah. So given the reasons why, I think, and that's another thing like we've talked about before is just you know you're asking the question, so you want to know the reason why, and that's what we're telling you. So I, I worked for a company before, and it was a bit of a. Oh, we don't want to upset people too much. You shouldn't tell and you shouldn't say this. But now I'm in a, a smaller family funeral run home. It's more open and, um, you know, we are, you know, more open to these questions and answering truthfully, you know. And even if somebody says, I will view that person, we'll stand them outside the viewing room and explain in graphic detail what they're about to walk in and see. And um, we never let them go in on their own. We go in and expose that body slowly if that's what they want. And sometimes you just take a little bit of the sheet off and they'll say, stop, we don't want to see any more. So it, it's about talking people through it and going, yes, you can, but this is what you will be confronted with. Not that, oh, well, they're not very nice. You know, that's a bit dark. And yeah, a bit, actual yeah. fact. No, we actually And it tell. sounds like that's what people said to you. So. Yeah. You know, that's, you've got to have some solace in that, the fact that they were honest and they've obviously looked after yeah. your person well. Absolutely, I think so, yes. Yeah. So that's good to have that honesty. Totally. Thanks, yeah. Jennifer, for yeah, the question. Thank you. Sorry. And, yeah, very sorry about it. Uh, Moira. Moira would like to know, 30 years ago, a friend of Moira's died and mm -hmm. um, there was a viewing. Yeah. And he looked like he had a straw in his mouth. Oh. And there was yeah. a really bad smell. 
<laughs> what would the straw have been? Okay, well, I doubt it's uh, the funeral home. I think that straw is probably a tube from the hospital. Um, which I, these days would be removed. Yeah, which would be removed. So this is 30, 30, 30 years, 30 years, years ago. ago. Mm -hmm. So 30 years, and it's like... I'm saying it's such a long time ago, yet it's not a long time ago, it's is not, it? It's not, but in the scope of but people, it is. people's opinions around death yeah. and dying in the funeral industry. In the industry? way it's changed in that 30 mm. years, yes, it's very different now in 30 years. So it sounds to me like it's a tube, medical tube of some kind, being put in during a uh, war. If it was an accident, maybe the ambulance turned up and... In, in, Intubated. In, that's the word. I can never say it. And put the tubes in, or maybe they were in hospital and they had tubes in, uh, feeding them drugs or uh, oxygen or whatever it is. Uh, you know, it sounds to me that there was a tube from a medical uh, place and they just didn't take it out when they put the deceased in there. And the smell would be because the fluid would still be in that tube, and because it hasn't been taken out and cleaned, we you've got the decomposition smell of the fluid that's probably sitting in that tube as well as the what is it in the mouth yeah yeah in the mouth where it hasn't been obviously cleaned um correctly uh and that's why you would get that smell so that's, that's unfortunate isn't it very unfortunate yeah but that's what it sounds like because we don't put straws in anybody for any reason no. that i i've never used a straw in a mortuary before ever so I, that's what I think that is, yeah. Hmm, that's bad practice, sorry. And that's a heap of questions. Yes, that was a heap of questions. Thank you, thanks Yay. for answering those. I think yeah. she did pretty well. Yeah, thank you, that was good. It's all right. I quite like that little... Let's do it, do it again, send your questions roll, in. Let's give us some more. Roll of questions and putting them out there like that. That's yeah. cool. Did you like that, Carla? I like that. That was cool, I enjoyed that. Thank you. All right, guys, thank you for that. Until yeah. next time, if you have sent us a question and we haven't answered it, we, we can't answer everything, but we do go through all, them all and we yeah. do read them all and, um, and we pick bits and pieces out and sometimes they might sit in our to-do file for a little while. Because so, it's a big to-do file. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of questions, but we're getting through them and we'll get to yours hopefully soon. Yeah. Um, thank you for taking the time to contact us if you have sent something in. Thank you to all our members Yay! who are getting uh, regular behind-the-scenes videos. Yay! And uh, priority... Well, check them out, guys. And priority question answering yes. by our lovely Tracy. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, yes. thanks to all our subscribers. Yes. It's nice to have you on board. It is great to have you on board, guys. We love it. We love you guys. So like, subscribe and share with your friends still. Until next time. We'll see you later. Bye. Bye.